Hey guys, it's Nate with Sauce Ain't the Boss here again, and today is day number 56 of quitting drinking alcohol. Today I was thinking a lot about the reasons I drank and what really caused me to drink. And, um, you know, it's really kind of interesting. I think sometimes we don't know why we drink until we stop drinking. And then you maybe, um, you know, you feel some things and experience some things that um, you go, well, I, I want to drink right now. And, and you go, huh, maybe that's one of the reasons I drink. You know, you start finding, you know, what some of your emotional triggers might be. Maybe it's stress or anxiety or socializing or those kinds of things. Now, I know for me, I was raised out in the country um, and we didn't have, uh, we, we lived on uh, three acres, but it was backed by BLM land. And uh, there were really no neighbor kids to play with when I was younger. And then I was homeschooled for a long time until I got into my, about my high school years. And, um, you know, so there just wasn't a whole lot of stuff to do, it felt like, or social interaction. And, you know, I had a brother and uh, a sister. I had a pretty big age gap between me and my sister. And then, uh, so we didn't have a whole lot in common. And then my brother... He uh, was two years older than I was, but we just didn't like doing the same things. You know, I was more of the, you know, riding bikes and going out hiking through the woods and building forts. And that just wasn't his jam, you know, and stuff. So we didn't do a lot. So I just kind of felt um, maybe a little bit isolated growing up. So I learned to really hate the feeling of uh, being bored, you know, and anytime there was any downtime or whatever, uh, later on in life, uh, you know, I, I had anxiety, a type of anxiety, just like it was just uncomfortable not being occupied or doing something, maybe because it reminded me of those times when I was young, when I just felt like there wasn't a whole lot to do and I didn't know what to do and that kind of thing. So, um, I know that's part of the reasons that I drank and it's interesting to kind of discover and get to the bottom of why you drink. You know, a lot of us think we need to drink or feel that this is something we have to do and are compelled to do it. But you're not going to die if you quit drinking. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, if you don't need. In fact, you're probably going to die sooner if you keep drinking. So um, you're going to feel some discomfort. Yes. But uh, it's nothing you can't get through or handle, and it's only temporary. Um, so, you know, you don't have to drink. There's no reason to, you know. And um, so ask yourself, why do you drink? Um, you like the way it makes you feel. Okay. Um, you, but what do you, what, what is your, what, what starts to well up within you, let's, let's say, that uh, when you don't drink? you start feeling uncomfortable. Well, why, you know? And um, I think there's a, you know, there's obviously physical cravings that can occur and some mental cravings and stuff like that. But um, I think that a lot of us just sometimes don't know really exactly why we drink or how to deal with certain situations in life without drinking. And that can be, like I say, stress, anxiety, socializing, um, you know, uh, being in a large group of people, you know, you feel uncomfortable. So maybe you feel the urge to drink there. Maybe that's how your drinking starts is kind of that liquid courage. And then it evolves into something that you begin doing, even when you're not socializing and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, we all have our different reasons. Some people drink because of grief. Maybe there's a lot of pain in your life. You've lost a loved one or, um, you're going through just uh, some difficult family or work situations, you know, and uh, we use that as our crutch. But, you know, um, it's really not obviously a good crutch to use uh, and it doesn't really help you deal with those things any better. Those problems are always, always still there and um, you're just numbing yourself temporarily. Um, and then I found when I was drinking, um, the next day would roll around and I'd feel worse and uh, I had brain fog and, you know, you're, you're not putting yourself in any type of good position to deal with whatever it is that's going on in life that you feel is making you drink in the first place, you know. And like I said, too, it, it's finding when you finally quit drinking, you know, um, 
it's discovering who you are again and discovering your strengths and your weaknesses. And I, I find, you know, if I have a really bad day and I get worked up about things that are going on that are, um, you know, maybe not in my control um, and I don't like them, I'll feel the urge to drink, you know, even, even uh, you know, recently here. And um, it's because, you know, uh, that's kind of always been what I use to just get away from that feeling that was uh, stressful and uncomfortable and, uh, you know, it would at least numb it temporarily, but uh, that's all it was doing. It wasn't fixing it at all. It's it like an ostrich with your head in the sand, you know, and um, so uh, as I'm navigating now uh, 56 days in here, um, I'm starting to learn to deal with stress better, I'm learning to deal with my boredom and anxiety better, and um, you know, it's more uncomfortable at first because you don't have your old standby that you used to go to in alcohol. And so you have to learn to navigate all this stuff without it now. And that's where some of the discomfort comes from that, that's temporary that I'm talking about is learning to deal with uh, all these things um, that were maybe reasons you drank in the first place without it now. But uh, that that whole process of dealing with these things one by one and, and uh, bit by bit as you go through, um, you start to be better at it. You know, you ne you've never allowed yourself to be good at dealing with stress. You've never allowed yourself to be good at dealing with anxiety or socializing without it. You know, um, you know these are different things that uh, you've always had this to lean on, and now it's not there, and you have to relearn how to do all these things without it. And uh, you can be good at dealing with stress. You can be good at all these things without alcohol. In fact, you're going to be uh, 100 times better at dealing with all these things without alcohol than having it as your crush. Whoops. Just to deal with the uh, emotions of it, you know. Um, so something to think about, guys. Um, you know, uh, why are you really drinking? What is it really giving you? Is it really helping you deal with these things? Or is it just a Band-Aid? Um, on something that needs surgery and um, I think you're better off learning to deal with all these things without alcohol because you're going to be a lot better at them and deal with them correctly um, versus uh, poisoning yourself and, and numbing yourself and ostriching, <laughs> ostriching, sticking your head in the sand like an ostrich. I don't even know if ostriching's a word. <laughs> Probably just made one up. So, uh, but yeah, guys, uh, something to think about today. Why do you drink? And, and uh, maybe you can discover that reason if you don't know already. Once you quit, and give it some time. Um, or maybe you already know and um, you're better off learning to deal with those things without it. Um, you're going to be a better human being in the long run, dealing with things head on and facing them clear minded than just putting, like I say, um, a temporary fix on um, you know something you're not good at dealing with. And the only way you're gonna get better at anything in life is practice facing it, doing it again and again and again, and then um, you're gonna be great at it eventually if you keep working on it and dealing with it properly. So um, you know, figure out what your reason is. And um, for me, like I say, it's boredom and anxiety. And um, I'm learning to do more and more things that I enjoy. Um, and uh, finding things to occupy times that I would drink and be bored, you know, and um, I'm really enjoying um, the process of, of finding who I am and why I drank in the first place and learning to actually be better at dealing with all this crap, you know, that um, I've just buried with alcohol all these years and, um, you know, uh, it's almost like finally growing up, you know, you finally get to a place where, uh, you know, um, you don't have your binky anymore and uh, you have to put on your big boy pants and learn to deal with all this stuff uh, that you've been kind of running from so long. And uh, it's a rewarding experience. There's some pain and discomfort that comes with it, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a cool journey because, uh, I, I kind of didn't know when I quit drinking that this was going to be part of it, you know, and, and now that it is, I go, wow, I, I didn't realize all these things about myself. And, um, 
it's pretty neat, really. It, it's I know I know this I might have a somber tone while I'm talking about this stuff, but it's really not. It, it's kind of exciting to um, have a, 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 a. I was just doing the same thing over and over again, drinking. Now there's all these like new experiences and emotions and feelings and things to learn and be better at now, rather than just the same old crap day in and day out that vicious cycle of drinking. You know, so. Um, I'm rambling now, guys, so that's it for today. But uh, yeah, uh, remember, sauce ain't the boss. You are. You guys have a great night.